Welcome to the concept. I'm Stanford Milburn, and I'm here with a very special guest, Mr. Namdi Dekongu. How you doing? Well, thank you. Thank you very much, brother. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, for some of the people around the world who haven't heard of you, could you uh, let them know uh, who you are and uh, and what it is that you're doing? My name is Nnam Dekano, and I'm the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. Um, Biafra is, uh, is a nation fighting for survival and existence uh, in the western part of Africa. And um, I've been touring all over the world to make sure that people hear our story. And our story is one of fighting to survive as a people, escaping genocide, and not wanting a revisit of the Holocaust that befell us between 66 and 1970. What makes you think that uh, the restoration of Biafra would bring peace uh, uh, to the people there? Because we were living in peace before the Europeans came. And ever since the Europeans came, we've been living in pieces. So the only way for us to return to what we used to have, <coughs> excuse me, is by dismantling that that was put when the Europeans came, which is Nigeria. Nigeria never existed before the white man came. After the coming of the white man and the creation of Nigeria, there's been chaos, there's been retrogression, there's been mayhem, there's been disorder, there's been chaos, there's been economic stagnation, there's been wanton murder and destruction, there's been uh, jihadi tendencies, so to speak. The whole place is upside down. There is so much killing going on in Nigeria that should the world become aware of it, something very drastic will be done, most definitely. So the best thing for us to do is to put to an end that thing that has brought all this disorder and chaos, and that very thing is Nigeria, as presently constituted. I, I once read um, that um, Biafra won the war uh, between uh, Biafra and Nigeria. and. Um, my thing is, um, you know, Nigeria was able to cut off food supply and medical supplies to the people. And uh, to me, you know, it sounds like, I take it as Biafra won the battle, but the war is still going on right now. What do you think about that? We defeated Nigeria, but we were not able to defeat Britain, and Russia, and what I refer to as the acquiescence or nonchalant attitude of the United States of America is at that point in time in our history. The food blockade, the cutting us off from the rest of the world, the starvation that accompanied that very blockade were all orchestrated by Harold Wilson's government in Britain. It wasn't a brainchild of Gowan, neither should we give credit to Nigeria for that? We never fought against Nigeria alone. We fought against major powers around the world, and that was why we actually lost the war. In a straight fight or battle between Nigeria and Biafra, we will overrun them within two weeks. That is a fact. The only reason why Nigeria survived was due to the intervention of Britain and the fact that they managed to get Russia to supply arms to Nigeria during that very war. There's Nigerians, especially those of uh, Igbo origin, all over the world. Can you explain to me what, what it is they're doing all over the world? Um, we are seeking to survive. Mm -hmm. We are seeking to make sure that we still have some remnants that will return to Biafra after Biafra has been restored. Not just the Igbos, you have the Bibios, you have the Yekis, you have the Shekris, you have the Domas, you have the Jaws all over the world. We are all Biafrans with one common value system, one heritage, one tradition, and one culture. And um, the only way to preserve us is by us scattering all over the world, so that when the affair comes, we have people who can return to it. Because right now, as we speak, people are being slaughtered. People are being killed. And I'm not sure that we'll have many of them left by the time the affair is restored, unless something very drastic is done about it. When you look at uh, Biafra, um, what is it uh, you see in the future of Biafra? Biafra is the hope of not just black Africans, but blacks all over the world. Without Biafra standing as an independent nation, 
capable of holding its own in the community of nations, black people all over the world will not have any dignity or upon which to base their existence or their survival as a race. In other words, Biafra is a big, the only big, if I might have, for not just West Africans, not just for Sub-Saharan Africans, but for every single black person on the face of this very earth. So it is in the interests of every black person alive to make sure that Biafra comes. See, and you know what? I've been thinking about this for a very long time because the way I look at it, um, I see black people all over the world. It's like black people are being exterminated. And um, it's like we have been shown in such a negative light to everyone else around the world, even to each other, to where uh, when we see this, when people see this happening, people don't really care. It's like, uh, you know, no one is saying anything. I've seen news uh, cases to where, um, where someone would go into a publishing company in London, shoot up 12 people. All over the world, people are posting flags, you know, in support of the people. But it was recently, I, I came up on the name Biafra. Now, I know for a fact that uh, the movie, Tears of the Sun, that was based on uh, Biafra and, and the uh, Nigerian War, but I didn't know that at the time I saw this. But um, the way I feel about it, if anyone managed to exterminate any black people in e any region, I feel that we all are done. You are correct, uh, because there is a grand conspiracy against Biafra, the emergence of Biafra. They know we are a very intelligent race. They know we are technologically advanced. They know we started practicing democracy before the Greek city-states emerged. They know that we are the beginning of creation, so to speak, because Biafra is situated at what is called the Zero Meridian zero longitude and zero latitude. They understand the importance and centrality of Biafra to the advancement of not just blacks in Africa, as I said earlier, but blacks all over the world. So there is a concerted effort to suppress Biafra, to keep the atrocities happening in Biafra away from mainstream media. It is a grand conspiracy because Biafra till this very day, or Nigeria, so to speak, remains the area of primary influence of Britain. In other words, Nigeria is still a colony. That is the issue. Now, you're talking about people being exterminated. It is happening as we speak right now in Nigeria. This very second it is happening. The extermination of minority tribes is happening in Nigeria, as we speak. But nobody's talking about it because the only item of concern is access to oil and gas, which they freely have. That is the issue. And we are not expecting other people to fight our battles for us. We are determined, we are committed, we will sacrifice everything sacrificable to make sure that Biafra is restored. I still want to continue to elaborate on this about the genocide of black people. Yes. Because when I look at it, you know, it's like it never really made sense to me how black people could come in and kill other black people for their resources. Um, it just never really made sense to me. And uh, I always felt that there was someone else who I would consider the puppet master controlling these groups. They would turn around and uh, pay these people to take over this place and so, uh, for their own personal benefits. When in reality, if they, I feel like if everyone come together and work together, it can enrich, in, uh, enrich everyone there. Because you have lands that are so rich to where basically people walk across the land, they're walking on top of diamonds. You know, and yet they can't collect these things and benefit off this for themselves. And um, that just, it really don't make any sense to me. Uh, why is it that black people are killing you know, coming after each other like that. Because um, I was once told that 
white people and black people have one thing in common, and that is hatred of black people. That is one thing we all have in common. The thing is, most people get frustrated with our laid back, very um, non-challenged attitude to things that matter and, of, and should be of concern to everybody. You talk about the resources that we have and these alliances that you have in Africa. What people don't really grasp is that the Muslim north of Africa that stretches into the Sahel, that actually encompasses some northern territories in West Africa, owe their allegiance to Saudi Arabia and to Islam. That is their primary concern, to be seen to be good servants of Saudi Arabia. And for some of us closer to the coast, the Atlantic, we want to be seen as very good servants of either Rome or of England or of heaven knows where else. There is, oh, I hope it is not irredeemable, inferiority complex within us that we need to look up to people to define and articulate our concerns and then prefer solutions to them. We don't feel confident enough to understand how to solve the problems that are confronting us with the resources available to us. There is also the mentality of primitive accumulation, which we must not disregard nor discard. People don't understand what it means to be a public servant, to serve the people for the benefit of everyone. Now, where you have such an arrangement, very disjointed, ill-organized. Predators are bound to come in. Britain is propping up a jihadi regime in Nigeria. Buhari is dead. They brought in an imposter from Sudan, placed somebody who is not a Nigerian at the seat of power after very ex extensive and expensive plastic surgery, and they made him the president of Nigeria. And everybody's saying, yeah, 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 yes, this is our president. But we all know that Buhari is dead. Now, Britain is doing that because they are anxious to secure their access to oil and gas in Biafra land. It's as simple as that. And black, I'm sure it exists everywhere in the world, as, as they used to have here. You know, the one they used to call house niggers in those days. That's what you have in Africa. Every president in Africa is a glorified house nigger. How do you explain why the elites of amongst us seem not to be part of the restore, restoration project. I don't know who you call an elite. Do you mean elite by the amount of degrees they've managed to gather or the amount of money in their possession, their wealth or their status? Because the, the whole elitism argument leaves me confused sometimes. The people you refer to as elites are puppets, as you quite rightly asked earlier. They don't have the interest of the people at heart. Now, you don't expect somebody who is serving a master and benefiting from it, rather than working in the plantation that was elevated to serve the master in the manor, to be concerned with the plight of those in the field picking cotton or cutting the sugar cane. That's how it is. So they are not the elites. They're only those who were brought closer to the master that they may continue the subjugation by another name. In other words, if it is a white man that we are fighting, the whole world will hear about it. That's the funniest thing about it. If you're fighting Europeans, the last great freedom fighter uh, was Nelson Mandela, may heaven rest his soul. The only reason why you heard about Nelson Mandela was because he was fighting white people. Martin Luther King in this country fought an internal apartheid white system in America. But when you rise up to fight those demons that the world can see, illiteracy, ignorance, poverty, disease, you get no credit for it. And that is what your friends fighting for. The eradication of that inability to reason that have characterized the existence of black people since Europeans discovered them. That's what we are fighting. A very major war against ignorance, against poverty, against deprivation, and against subjugation. That doesn't make a very attractive headline, but that the things that actually matter 
The problem that we are having is not the white man, not European, because it is given that man is predatory by nature. We slaughter animals to, to eat. That's how humans are designed. So if we have anything in Africa that Europeans think will benefit them, they'll come and, and, and take it. That's how life is. That is why we migrate. That is why we go to uh, better economies, so to speak, in order to be able to survive. That is just basic, pure human instinct. It is now left for us to understand that we have things that we can deploy or utilize to make our lives better. Uh, so I never blame the white man, to be honest with you. I blame our inability to reason something. It's our fault. And that's what your friends have to call it. We'll be back in a minute. And, um Stay tuned. Let me tell you who to blame. Blame the boy lying at your feet, his body oozing life through the hole in his stomach where the bullet tore him apart. Blame him for challenging you, for not looking away and for not backing down when you pulled out the gun. Blame your mother for bringing you into this world when she was but a kid herself and for dragging you up, not bringing you up. Blame society for not giving you hope. Blame your father for not being there, the man who looked after himself instead of looking after you. Blame the gun in your hand for making you a target, for making you more likely to be picked on. Blame the dead boy, blame your mother, blame society, blame your father, blame the gun, blame anyone but yourself for not being strong enough to put down the gun, to break the cycle. Welcome back to the concept. Okay. I have another question that I wanted to ask you. The world seems to be biased against the Biafra uh, genocide compared to the Rwanda genocide. Can you tell us why is that so? Because Africa embodies the spirit of that reason, black man. The world doesn't want to draw attention, and by the world I mean Britain. They don't want the world to know about Biafra, because within Biafra lies the true liberation of a black man. For those who don't know, could you tell the people yes. what Biafra means? Biafra means come and join. Is um, is an amorphous nation of diverse peoples uh, that held together by one common value system. Anybody can become a Biafran. And we said that when Biafra comes, every black American or every black Caribbean will be entitled to return to Biafra. Because most of the people that built the USA are Biafran. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure if you're aware of that. This country was built. The majority of the people that were forcibly transported into this very country to build it for 200 years without wages or pay were Igbo people, the Africans, seconded by Dahomey, which is today's very republic. Not the people of the Sahel, not the Fulanis, not the houses, we built America, the Igbo state. The U.S. has played a significant role in the countries obtaining their freedom. Yes. What effort have the indigenous people making here in the U.S. to ensure that uh, the U.S. does the same for the effort? Um, I'm sure that by now they're beginning to rise up to their responsibility, to live up to what we expect of them which is to lobby the senators and the various Congress people to make sure that the issue of Biafra enjoys the limelight that it deserves and that our suffering, our pain, the genocide going on is also adequately covered and reported here and me being a program is one of that very process. So we are doing quite a lot. But as I said earlier, Britain owns Nigeria. It's their private property. And the United States of America, by virtue 
of the protocol of the world order after 1945 is required to seek the attention of Britain before intervening in any former colony of Britain, which unfortunately we are the part of. That is why the killing in Biafra can go on forever, no one will back on my That is why Ambazonians will be slaughtered on a daily basis in southern Cameroons and I want to send a fire about because France owns the Cameroons. That's how it is in Africa. We are still properties of um, foreign powers till tomorrow morning. Sadly, but that is the truth. So it doesn't matter what we do here or the effort we put in. We're only hoping and, and, and praying that the likes of Trump will be able to do something about it because he is not part of the established political order. He is um, an independent-minded human being that I do hope we'll be able to see through the pain and the suffering of our people and do something about it. Yeah, I hope that uh, he would be able to see uh, see uh, the pain of the people and be able to uh, have it in his heart to do something about it as well. He is very silent when uh, when things are happening, when, when bad things happen to uh, people of color. He's very silent about that. And uh, he's vocal when um, people begin to talk about white people and the wrong that they do. You know, and so, uh, but I really hope that... Um, Sorry, could I uh, perhaps correct an impression? Yes. It was under Obama's regime, a black man, that Africa suffered its longest sustained period of instability. Obama replaced Gaddafi. It wasn't a white man that did it. It was Obama who installed the dead Buhari in whose name a wave of jihadi conquest is happening in Nigeria. Obama had eight years to do something for black people, structurally speaking. I'm not talking about the very artificial stuff that you have around you, like a well, healthcare center here or a school playground there. I'm talking about fundamental restructuring of the position of Afri black African, uh, or should I say African American, here. Mm -hmm. But he failed to do that for eight years, for eight solid years. And if your own kind couldn't do anything for you, what do you expect a white folk to do? Yeah. So you can understand. When Trump is quiet, I'm not making excuses for him. Mm -hmm. The question I will ask is, what did Obama do for eight years to mitigate against those situations that will give rise to racial tensions in America? Well, that never happened. That has never happened, and exactly. even I spoke about that myself. Um, Obama was also very quiet when it came down to that. And when it comes down to doing something to uplift black people, to equalize the situation, Obama never wanted to do anything that would have a direct positive effect on black people. The reason why I say positive effect is because everyone has received reparations in America. But when it comes down to Blacks, everyone, it seems that everyone is against paying reparations. I mean, America even gave uh, the Jews, uh, you know, paid Jew, uh, Jewish people reparations. Uh, look at, um, I even look at, you know, not that I'm down in Israel, but look at how, how much money America sent Israel every year with our tax dollars. You know, we work hard for our money, but they send Israel billions of dollars every year, and uh, and yet they're having such a hard time to pay reparations, and that's a big ongoing thing now. Uh, uh, that's finally been brought up. Obama never really done much for black people, and uh, and for everyone who say that he yeah, have, that's a that's a mis misconception. Everyone was just happy that we finally had a black president, but let's move on. So, um, people are talking about African unity. Yes. Does the IPOB uh, want to separate from Nigeria? Absolutely. Yeah. An independent nation. 
this African unity is a myth. Not every black person is related. The same way in Europe. A Scottish man is different from an English man. They are both Protestants, they are both Caucasian, they are both the same people, descended, who knows, from the same bloodline. The same thing with Saxony and Germany, the same thing with Norman. The first king of England was a Frenchman, William the Conqueror. Now, if the French will want to see themselves as <clears throat> being different from the British, and the British just left the EU, they're all Christians, mind you. They follow the cross. What relationship do I have with somebody from Switzerland? Our value systems are not the same. Not the same culture, not the same language. Nothing binds us together. The fact that our skin color is black doesn't mean we should come together and be one nation. Because what drives a nation is the value system. Their value system is even from ours. If you mix the two together, it will never work. It's like mixing Pakistan and India, will it work? It's like bringing Afghanistan to come and inhabit a part of Texas, will that work? These are the things that black philosophers always forget. When you want to build unity, you don't build unity on sentiment and thin air. You build it around the substance. People come to the USA. The um, English, um, um, the Puritans founded this very nation upon an ideal that respects republicans, liberty, and freedom. Inverted comes, of course. They left Europe to come here to build this very, <coughs> excuse me, beautiful nation. Will you ask Americans to unite with Europe and be one country? No. Then why should I be in the same country with a Fulani man whose allegiance is to Saudi Arabia and who doesn't see the world from the same viewpoint? That is why Africa is backwards. As long as we continue to respect the artificial colonial boundaries imposed upon us by the Europeans, we are doomed to fail. Year after year, decade after decade, century after century to eternity. A black man should be able to rise above what I call primordial sentiment. The fact that you, I can trade with you, I can relate with you. If your ancestors are from Biafra, by all means come back to Biafra because we share the same value system. But I can't be in a country where my daughter can play football for Nigeria, but the daughter of the Sultan cannot because she's not allowed to expose herself. And you claim you're in the same country. Do you get my dream? Yes. What will you do? about the uh, Fulani uh, vigilante in Biafra land, which, will, which has just been established. We will stop them. We will fight them. And we will stop them, eventually. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for having me. Mr. Nancy Kanu, and I'm glad that you were able to come on. And uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you very soon. And really looking forward to working with you on other projects. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right. Thank you very much.